Tonight, I've been scared by bats, scared shitless by kangaroos, but by golly gosh, I've got an absolute ripper of an image from the Aussie Outback. That is what I love, going to locations which shot hundreds, if not millions of times by tourists throughout the day, beautiful images, but coming to a location and getting a nightscape vlog and changing the complexity of it completely. This is a ripper of an image, an image that you must see. Let's get into it. G'day you play legends, thank you for joining me for another Nightscape Photography Vlog at an iconic Aussie Outback location. We've got clouds rolling through that a blank canvas that we want to paint, light up the sky and get Mickey Mouse images. If this works out tonight, it will be a bloody game changer because I've never seen this particular image shot at night, even though it's been shot by hundreds if not millions of people throughout the day already. So that is what I love about photography, getting something that's already been done and changing it completely. And what's even better is tomorrow morning I'll be back at this location to photograph the way it should be photographed. A panoramic sunrise that's gonna be absolutely ripper. So make sure before we get into this vlog to drop below and subscribe because there's still plenty more content to come from the Aussie Outback in Woolpeter. Right, shut up, let's get into it. Okay, tonight we are going to be photographing the southern part of the Milky Way and the beautiful Southern Cross. Part of my logo, the Southern Cross, you only see it in the Southern Hemisphere, so it's very proud Australia. You'll see it on our flag, it's a national icon. So tonight I want to photograph it. We're also photographing an iconic view. If you go into Google and type in Will Pina Pound, you're going to see two main images all the time. One, out of a plane at sunrise, and secondly, this shot right here. But you won't see it with the Milky Way and Southern Cross above it. So that is why I want to photograph an iconic location a little bit differently. Then we're going to camp here tonight, then tomorrow morning, we're going to do the old cliche thing and get an absolute rubber ducky of an image, beautiful sunrise. So make sure to drop below and subscribe for that one because that will be a belter if we get some conditions. But now I'm photographing the X-T3 16mm 1.4 because I want this to be tack Mickey Sharp because I want to try and sell this image, print this image, whatever it may be. I want this image as a keeper. So what I'm going to do for the composition is we've got this leading line of a road, which obviously you can't see, but tomorrow morning when we do the photograph for the panoramic, you'll see that beautiful and it's very iconic leads you into the back. I still want to incorporate that in a vertical composition. The reason I'm shooting vertical, it does tend to lend itself better to a panoramic more than a landscape, but it does better work for a landscape orientation. But I want that Milky Way beaming straight up into the sky. So that's what I'm gonna go through and do, and do now, is basically bump my eyes up to 12,800 ISO, five seconds, and just keep mucking around with the composition to get it set up because I can't really get my head torch out because it's so far away to get the composition down packed. So that's what I'm gonna go through now and do and we will nail that composition. So that is a real red hot tip for finding the composition very quickly. Go to your maximum ISO for me, 12,800. I can go a bit above that, but that's plenty enough for me. Max aperture 1.4 and then a five seconds. I can get three images as I would with my normal settings just to go through and rattle it off. Now I've got the composition in place, I want to set up for the night sky. You can probably see in those images, it's very heavy cloud. Now I can see to the eastern side that that is clearing. That is going away and in about 
probably 15 minutes we have clear sky or a patch of clear sky then another cloud bank is coming so i want to make sure to rattle off all those 15 images in that next cloud bank so i'm going to f2 for my aperture i'm going to make sure to get the perfect focusing so drop down to automatic uh, sorry to manual focus and then focus to infinity then i want to go to an iso value of 6400 and with a 16 mil lens, that gives me a perfect readout for 13 or 15 seconds. Now for me, I'm actually going to go 15 seconds tonight because we're very, very dark skies. And I want to push that out to get a little bit more detail out of it, and especially that Southern Cross. So now I want to go through and put an interval timer on. Actually, I'm going to wait for those clouds to go over, then put an interval timer on and rattle off 15 images just for the night sky. Oh man, being out here sometimes freaks me out. There's this bat that is either interested in the camera or something. It even flew into the back of the van and out before. It scared the absolute bejesus out of me. But it's attacked the camera about two times now. It's either wanting to mate with it or it thinks it's an enemy and wants to attack it. But it's scaring the bejesus out of me. Bugger off. I don't want to be out here by myself. It's scary enough as it is. But now I've got the night sky images in place. I want to go through, oh, there's lightning all the way over there. Beautiful. Now I want to go through and set up for the foreground. And I don't want to add any, any artificial light. It's way too far in the distance to add any artificial light anyway. So what I'm going to do now is go back to a 1.4 aperture and max it right out. Keep that ISO at 6,400. And now I'm going to go all the way to one minute. I'm gonna punch down the exposure, check that exposure to make sure I'm happy with it. Now that's gonna depend a lot on if there's cloud bank across the Milky Way, it's gonna make it quite a bit darker. So if the cloud does get in time for that, I'm getting those 15 images, the first image is gonna be brighter than the last image. So I have to make sure I'm getting that segment perfect in between the clouds or fully with the clouds. And if it's with the clouds, probably have to go to a two minute exposure or maybe even longer. So I might wait for that cloud to go across and get the next clear sky that comes through and get the foreground image for that. But unfortunately that could be in about an hour and a half time. So I might go through and try it now and see how we go. Okay, what I went through and done is I got 10 images in. There's two reasons for that. If I waited any longer, it's another five minutes to get those 15 images in and the cloud would have covered over. But what I'm gonna quickly go through and do is swing it just basically right behind you are, sort of facing towards that um, cloud that's getting that th thunderstorm. But also there's those Magellanic clouds above a beautiful rock in the ABC range. That's what it's called, the ABC range. And it's very, very interesting. It shows 590 billion years of history through the rock formation. Whether you can pick it up on camera when I capture that now or not, who knows. But I really want to capture that famous iconic rock that everyone will know in South Australia from this location with the Magellanic clouds in the background. So I'm going to stop talking now, go back to those two F2. 6,400 eyesight in 13 seconds to capture the Magellanic cloud in the sky before that next cloud bank comes over. But I'm gonna have to jump the fence for that. Bloody hell, now those kangaroos hopping around and every time they jump, they bloody slap their tail on the ground because they're sort of scared themselves and it scares the bejesus out of me. And I'm not really that scared of things out here in the desert, but I just think it's because I'm in the middle of absolute nowhere. And if something happens to me, I'm donkey's years from anything and probably dead and it just scares me a little bit, all right? Bloody just a kangaroo. But this way, photographing the Magellanic Clouds is a bit luckier because Right behind me, we've got Venus. It's the third brightest thing in the sky, as we've learned already, lighting up this foreground. So that actually helps me out a lot. It's only a small planet, but it adds a huge dynamic to the foreground element. Just the tiniest little bits of light in the sky makes an absolute abundance of difference when you're photographing that. So going back to those settings, f1.4, 6,400 ISO. I'm actually gonna drop down to about 50 or 40 seconds because of that. I think 50 seconds will be all right. Get another 10 images and that should do me because that cloud's coming through and I'm just getting a little bit more wind right now. And that's sort of generally because the front's coming through. So now 
interval telemeter, interval velometer, and crack them on right now. All right, it's starting to get a little bit late, a little bit cold, and I don't want to deplenish my battery life too much. So I've still got three days left to camp them before I can really charge those batteries back up. Plus, I have to be up in about six hours to photograph this rip of a place once again. So make sure to drop below and subscribe for that. Before I leave you with this final image that I've captured, I just want to say if you are struggling to learn night photography, landscape photography, I will leave a link for my membership course down below, $9.99. I should get all the benefits of the monthly giveaways, the weekly tips and tricks to help you out along the way to evolve your landscape and night photography. So if that does interest you, there'll be a link for that in the description below. As I said, make sure to join me tomorrow morning to catch this beautiful place with an absolutely epic sunrise, fingers crossed. But I'll leave you with this final image. Get out there, keep creating, keep inspiring. I'll see you in the morning. Ciao.